Didn't she do amazing? Clap. Yes. It's not easy getting up here and ministering. And this was her very first time ever ministering, and it didn't seem like it, did it? No. 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 <laughs> and we thank God. Sin folk ain't always kin folk. <laughs> You know, now it's a new saying we're going to be talking about, you know, that's sinful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of playing, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Come on, give him glory. <laughs> God is so good. Yes. I just want to thank you forever and ever. And ever for all you've done, done for me. Blessings and honor and glory and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Come on, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Y'all open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And we're just going to stay in Proverbs. So don't go nowhere. Amen. We're going to start at 10. We're going to jump around. Proverbs 4, verses 10 through 15, 20 to 23, and then 25 to 27. Mm. Matter of fact, y'all keep Proverbs 4 in your back pocket. Because that is a major proverb. Amen? Amen. I was just eating on that proverb. Like, wait a minute. You ever have bookmark on your cell phone? Let me bookmark this. I'll get back to it. Because <laughs> it's really powerful. Y'all ready? Amen. Proverbs 4, New Living Translation reads, My child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a long, good life. I will teach you wisdom ways and lead you in straight paths. Verse 12. When you walk, you won't be held back. When you run, you won't stumble. Verse 13. Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. Don't do as the wicked do, and don't follow the path of the evildoer. Verse 15. Don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. Verse 20. My child, pay attention and do what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Amen. Verse 23. Guard your heart above all else. For it determines the course of your life. 25. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. 26. Mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. I'm going to preach. Never let go. Never let go. Dear God, hold us in your hand. Holy Spirit, you already here. Lord, so just stir up the gift. Amen. And Lord, let us take this word into our hearts and our minds, into our spirits, so we can grow and become more mature in you. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Never let go. So Proverbs chapter 4 shares with us wisdom from a father's perspective. King Solomon shared his advice about life, hoping to encourage the youth. These are the same types of things that his father, David, shared with him. And now we have it pinned in paper or electronically permanently pinned on cell phones and tablets and iPads and such, that we can get the word of God anywhere all over the world. Somebody say amen. amen. And so here we have this wonderful advice that a father gave to a son, and then the son became a father. Come on, amen. somebody. Amen. And so this is a perfect example of, of taking a, 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 a word and, and made it, have it blessed through the tra uh, generations. So this is a perfect example of that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Our God loves us so much that he dedicated his entire word to his sons and daughters so that we can be blessed. But what good is good advice and wisdom if we don't use it? Amen. 
We hear a lot of interesting things, but if you don't use it, then how can it become power? Something that is powerful but not used is only to be admired, but something that is powerful and used is a weapon. Somebody say amen. 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 And this word of God is our weapon for warfare, tearing down strongholds in the name of Jesus. And so how we have this life that we are living that has so many challenges and distractions from every day of the week to every moment to every minute of, of, a, of a waking day. Well, we have to have this word of God so that we can move and shift and do the things that God has called us to do. Our success in these situations are are merely fa uh, based on how well we can stay focused, how well we can follow God's wisdom, and to not give up no matter what comes our way. Somebody say amen. amen. Holy Spirit, touch my mouth that I make sure I say your word. Amen. amen. Proverbs 4.13 says, Take hold of my instructions. Don't let them go. Guard them, for they are the key to life. What I think is so amazing about it is that the main point of this text is don't let go. Don't let go of God's word. Never let go of God's instructions. This is the main point and the first point that Solomon gives anybody who reads this. The Bible says not only that, but to guard them. So not only are we supposed to hold on and not let go to these instructions, but we got to guard them because they're the key to life. Yeah. We have to guard. Why do we have to guard something like this? If you have to guard something, that means that you think somebody might take it. Mm. If we have to guard it, then that means you think somebody might destroy it or deface it or corrupt it. Well, that's the truth. The enemy likes to take the truth and try to corrupt it to make it a lie. Yeah. Because that's what he does. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy and many of you have received truths in your life, but then you allow the enemy to come and corrupt it and turn that very truth into a lie. Mm. But he's saying that as you receive truth, as you receive the instructions from heaven, you need to guard that thing so that the enemy can't make it a lie. Mm -hmm. You are saying you receive the prophetic word and you feel our blessed and highly favored. Oh, I got a word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then you don't guard it. Matter of fact, just tell everybody about it. Oh. And then it becomes open, wide open, and people, what they start doing? Judging it. Those are darts. So they start tearing it. By the time it was over, you stop believing in it. Right. And then you're like, I don't know if that's a word. I don't know. I don't know. Better yet, how about guard it from yourself? Amen. Amen. We'll take the word home, and then we try to do what, what people always try to do. Try to manifest your own prophecy. I, I used to do that all the time. I used to hear a prophetic word and then try to figure out how I'm going to accomplish it. And my remember the time, this, uh, my spirit mouth was all like, uh, I said, Ma, you know, spirit mouth, pray, pray this manifest, you know. And she said, well, did God tell you it was going to happen? I said, yeah. She said, well, I got to pray that it manifest. <laughs> if he already said, he about to do it. Amen. And I said, but come on, come on, God, Ma. So, so she said, okay. So she, she prayed, and this is what she prayed. This is wisdom. Lord, bless Martina. Blessed that she don't try to manifest her own prophecies. Wow. That she will have the patience to wait and allow you to do it for her. Amen. Amen. And I was like, you know, I, you know, you respectful, you know, but thanks, spirit mom. But it wasn't what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I wanted her to say, "Do it, not God." She's that shit. You know, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted theatrics. I want to be like, I'm standing in agreement. I want you to like call me every day, talking about I'm praying for you. It's going to happen. <laughs> I know it is. I know it is, God. My, you know. So you want those situations, right? But God said that's that's not what he desires for you. He wants you to stay on faith. This is why when we read a word from God, we read the word scriptures, we receive it and be done with it. Let, let God do what he need to do. Yes. When we receive a word, and you know it's on point. Don't ask about 10 people if it's on point. If you know it's on point or not because it hits, you can yes. feel it in your spirit. If you got a relationship with God, you got the Holy Spirit, you know when a word is, is on point, it hit. You just feel it like, oh, God. You know, if a pagan can get a word from the word from the Lord, come on, come on, somebody. Yeah. And they be like, how did you know that? Come on, because something in them, it hit. Do you understand? Yeah. Then guard it from yourself if you know you struggle with doubt and some issues and you know you got drama. Y'all got quiet to my amen. <laughs> Thank God for our honest house. Yes. <laughs> you know you got drama in your head. 
Hide it from me. I said, Lord, I always tell the Lord, I said, Lord, make this Martina proof. I don't say dummy proof, but I said Martina proof. Because you already know my issues. So make the situation Martina proof. I received so many prophecies when I was getting ready to get married to my husband. And uh, the year that I met him, I didn't know he was my husband when I met him. So when I met him, I met him actually a year before we actually got married. And so I met him through his uh, his sister. And so then I didn't see him for like a long time, and then he popped up months later. So I had already met him. And so people would give, I mean, prophets tell me, you know, you, the man of God coming to your life, he's a businessman, that's like, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, so <laughs> I'm like, you gonna meet him before the end of the year? Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> and at that time, I had a TV show, so I was on a I was on a TV show, and then uh, you probably came on the show pro- prophesying about my husband on the TV show, and uh, you know we were internationally, you know. So I had people like was commenting on MySpace. You know how long ago that was MySpace and stuff. Yeah. stuff, stuff. And it was like Are we gonna pray for the man that God take him, you know, because they were just, you know, it was out there. I'm crying on my show. <laughs> On my show. And so here it is. I remember it was December 31st. Mm. And I'm thinking, like, as soon as I meet the man of God, it's going to be on. Like, I meet you on Tuesday. We in love on Wednesday. <laughs> we planning on Thursday. I'm toting you around like my purse on Friday. Mm. This is my man. Mm. <laughs> I'm thinking like that. So I didn't know I had already met him, right? So then I'm thinking, like, all oh, this word. I haven't been receiving a prophetic word about him for the whole year. And I didn't know I met him. And so he wasn't in my face at that time. I wasn't in his face. I just met him, and then we were apart for months. And so then I'm thinking, like, okay, where is he? Where is he, God? Where is he? Then he joins the church. I still don't know he's my husband. Mm. Go on, somebody. Y'all looking like, what? So he in my face. I have no idea. I have none. So I'm here December 31st. I remember I was in there like just upset and I was crying and I was talking to a girlfriend in town and I said, I ain't getting married. And she said, Yes, you are. And I said, no, it's not. It's December 31st. I used to be, I ain't got no husband. <laughs> I ain't got nobody. She was like, No, I said, I ain't getting married. All these prophets done lied to me. <laughs> I ain't getting married. Ain't nobody gonna marry me. It's a wrap. I'm done. I'm gonna be at home with my dog. <laughs> I'm mad. I ain't date nobody else. I ain't ever falling in love again. <laughs> she said, come on, look, she said, Terry with me. Like, come on, come on, come on now. It's for hours. I said, I don't care what you say. It ain't gonna happen. It's the 31st. I was supposed to meet for the end of the year. She still got time. Hope I got three hours. She's talking about me gonna walk in the door. I got three hours. <laughs> what you mean? You know somebody? You already knock on the door? I ain't got no boyfriend. <laughs> So I go on, I'm upset. And I just, you know, just shut that part of my heart off. Like, it ain't gonna happen. Then my husband happens to make himself known two months later. But I had met. The word did come to pass. You met him. I met him and God hid him from me mm-hmm. to make it Martina proof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, see, I, I missed that one. Yeah. He hit him. He said, yeah, he's gonna be around you the whole time. And you won't be able to see him. So I can position him. So when it's time. Mm-hmm. Then you'll see him. And y'all be blessed. And so when he made his affections known to me. Four months later we was married. Wow. Real fast. Mm-hmm. That was real Martina proof. Because he couldn't have no like. Mess around get an argument. He ain't mine. That ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> four months ain't enough time to be falling out with nobody. <laughs> right. It's true. Look, look, look. Some of y'all come out, I don't know. I done fell out with somebody on the first date. <laughs> Whatever you saying. <laughs> but that's what it was. And it was, it was the thing that we need to be able to believe God for everything. Don't let go. When God give you instructions, follow the instructions. Yeah. God give you a promise, follow the promise. And you can't allow yourself or anybody else to steal that word out of your heart. How does the enemy try to steal? Through disappointments, misunderstandings, challenges, hardships, unforgiveness, pride, yada, yada, yada. Right? Mm-hmm. Therefore, we must guard God's instructions. Amen? Amen. Amen? His promises are the fruit of life. 
but his instructions are the key to life. Amen. You must master God's instructions before you get the promises. Amen. Some of us be all talking about, I'm going to promise God, and we shout out the promises, but we forget about what God told us to do when we was going to get it. God said, you're going to. God's gonna say, you're gonna be a millionaire and you're gonna own about five hours. Just hop, she can go take care of God. <laughs> All you gotta do is sow into this person, that person, and you gotta do this and that and clean your own house. And then, <laughs> what? <laughs> Fix your credit. God will give it all that. We just forget all that stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> Stop. Still ain't paying your bills. Still ain't cleaning your house. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm, like, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I got that word. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to keep that in mind that God's promise is the key to life. God's instructions is the key to life, but the promise, the promise is the fruit. Amen. Amen. That's good. All right. So Solomon shares with us four keys of life in Proverbs 4. We're going to go over those. The first key to life, he says, don't do what the wicked do. Okay. Don't do what the wicked do. Okay? So Proverbs 4, verses 14 through 15, it says, Don't do as the wicked do. Don't follow the path of evildoers. Don't even take a, don't even think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty simple, right? We serve in God. And why would we even consider doing anything wicked if we serve him? Mm -hmm. Oh, but we do. This is why King Solomon made his point. Yeah, here's the first point. Don't clown. <laughs> Don't be doing anything wicked. Okay, that's his first point. Mm -hmm. Don't even do what they do. Some Christians tell me, I'm saved by grace and start clowning all day long. <laughs> You ever had those moments? Like, Lord, let me take my earrings off. Lord, save me. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Because I'm about to knock them out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Premeditated sin. <laughs> <laughs> King Solomon knew this was an issue, and his daddy knew it was an issue. It was like, don't do what the wicked do. Even though you can do it, don't mean you're supposed to do it. Do you understand? Because it will hold you back. It will hold you back. Solomon specifically takes that, uh, talks about how we have to keep moving. And we have to keep moving because idle hands are the devil's workshop. That's what Proverbs 16, 27 says. So we have to stay focused and stay productive in the Lord. You sitting around here uh, twiddling your thumbs, as my mom used to say. Seeing you're twiddling your thumbs, the enemy gives you something to do. You ever notice um, us being in the, in the cold states? When they get cold, more babies are conceived. That's true. Because when you're outside, outside stuff to do. People be outside hiking and doing all kinds of stuff. But when it's cold, people don't want to go outside. So they be all hugged up in the house and things happen. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's a lot of summer children. Y'all looking at me. You know why? Because the lot of the amount of activity has now decreased. Even with people who are very, you know, exercised. Some of them, you have to be really dedicated to exercise when it's cold outside because we naturally want to eat and relax and chill by a fire somewhere. We don't want to get up and do anything. So the productivity goes down. So imagine if you're not living under the hand of God, how much trouble you can get yourself in. That's true. It's true. So we have to understand that. King Solomon, he understood that. That's what he said, keep moving. Keep being a servant of God. You finish one project, do another. Singles, stay busy. Yeah, that's true. Married folks, you got enough stuff to keep you busy. I ain't never seen a married couple that's bored before. They probably exist, but I've never seen it. But you got stuff to worry about. Cook dinner, go grocery shopping. I Look, I've been being a wife all day long. And then you tell me, oh, I got to do something else too. It's a lot of work. Taking care of your home and somebody else and things of that nature. But when you're single... You do this today or Thursday. I mean, it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you can wear the same outfit. It don't matter. You go to like 10 different places. They ain't seen it. <laughs> 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 it's the real truth because being single is a lot lesser maintenance. Yeah, 
So in order to be single and saved, you got to be busy. Yes. Fruitful doing the right thing. Somebody say amen. amen. So don't stop moving. Don't do what the wicked do. Stop hanging around the wicked talking about, I'm going to help the ladies. Don't be with no wicked boyfriend. Talking about, I'm going to get him saved. No, you ain't. The Bible even talks about uh, bad companionship, corrupts good morals. Yeah. He going to get you caught up because you're going to fall in love and all this stuff. And next thing you know, you be like, I'm in drinking. I'm in drinking. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you be doing stuff you don't normally do, start picking up his language, you get around your girlfriend's like, when you start talking like that? Yeah. Uh-huh. When you start dressing like that? When you start watching this? I dated a man that liked wrestling, and I started watching wrestling, and I started talking about wrestling. Like, when you start watching wrestling, I always watch wrestling. You ain't watching wrestling. <laughs> but my boo watch wrestling, so we watching wrestling. You understand what I'm saying? Let's keep it out of this. If gentlemen, he started changing. If he wasn't cleaned up and then his girlfriend wasn't cleaned up, then that's a good thing. He started cleaning up. Man, when you start wearing ties. <laughs> when you start watching your kids, man, you know I'm trying to get crispy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Little something. I mean, things start happening. You understand? The person you with changes your disposition in life. So make sure you're not with somebody that would change your disposition in a negative way. Yeah. So I say, amen. Yeah. Number two. Guard your heart. Yeah. Guard your heart. So we're still in Proverbs 4, right? Yeah. Proverbs 4, 23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. When the Bible speaks of heart, and I've said this many times, it speaks of the mind. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, your state of mind will determine your course of life. Wow. Guard your mind above all else, for it determines your course of life. This thing right here, whoo, it's the computer in your body. It is so powerful. Now watch this. So Solomon knew that the enemy was after our minds. So we just figuring it out. But everybody knew it already. He knew it. Watch this. He said, our minds develop the soul. So watch this. If our minds develop our soul, and just a few weeks ago or a few months ago, I talked about all the components of the soul. If y'all remember, the components is of the soul is character and emotions. Yeah. Embodied in spirit. Yeah. Character and emotions. Our minds actually develop that. How does it happen? Because our eye gates and our ear gates are now what? They take in the information that our mind thinks about. And then our mind filters into our character. So we start doing corrupt things, our soul becomes corrupt. If we don't control our thought life, our soul becomes corrupt. Oh, come on. Why? (laughs) Because the thoughts that we have affect our emotions. Mm -hmm. So if we have positive thoughts, we're going to have positive emotions. We have negative thoughts. We're going to have negative emotions. So what you think about can corrupt your soul. Amen. Okay, that's deep right there. But you have to understand why the enemy is after your mind. If the enemy is attacking your mind and you start changing in character or emotion, then guess what? He just attacked your soul. Mm. He's not going to go directly after your soul. Unless you ain't coming in the blood, it would be super easy. But what he'll do is, I'm going to get in your head first. And it's going to automatically be mine. Because your mind is that key. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Okay. So if he can get up in here all day long, he take your soul. He can't take your soul through your body. Your body's flesh. It's going to stay here. So attacking your body, unless you would feel some type of way in your mind about it, attacking your body does not going to affect your soul. Your soul is definitely affected with your decisions that you make. Yeah, yeah. Free will decisions that you make. Mm-hmm. So mind it, he's after your mind all the time. Things that happen around you, things that happen to you, things that are said to you, things that are said around you, all that information you are processing in your thoughts. And how you react to it will, will detect how much uh, uh, attack comes to your soul. So we are to guard our mind because if we guard our mind, we've guarded our what? Soul. Our soul. Pay attention to that. That's deep right there. Hold on to that. 
Keep your mind right. That's why it's so much battlefield in the mind. That's why mental health is at an all-time high. It is. It is. And because there's stuff in our food. I'm going to let that go. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of things that's going on. And it's at an all-time high. People are popping off all the time. Y'all hear me what I'm telling you? It's true. So we have to keep our mind stand on Jesus. Those old school songs where you say, I woke up this morning with my mind, yeah. Stand on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Now, so you had that, that thing. we like, oh, that's old school. I remember my grandma used to sing that song, right? Guess what? When your mind is stayed on Jesus, so are your thoughts. Amen. How can you think of Jesus? In the right manner, and then have your thoughts going crazy. You understand? You get the Holy Spirit in your soul, and you keep your mind focused on God. He will bring you perfect, perfect peace if you desire it. Amen. 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 Number three. Who was the first two? Don't do what the wicked do. And the second one. Guard your heart. Good. So here's the third one. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Some of y'all military people know what I'm talking about. Look straight ahead. Eyes front. There it is. Eyes front. You look back, you blown up. Especially if you what? First line, ain't y'all? The front line is you can't be looking behind yourself. You got to just make sure your team back there. I got to know my team back there because I'm front line. Mm -hmm. It's like that in the spirit realm, right? Mm -hmm. Eyes front. Look straight ahead. Proverbs 4.25. Proverbs 4.25 says, Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Now, did you know that David was the top military man in that time? If you read the story of King David, he wasn't always a king. He actually started serving as, um, as top military. If anything needed to be done, David was the one that trained people. Any war needed to be fought and won, they would send David because he trained the best. Mm -hmm. This is why when you read other stories about <laughs> David in the cave of Abdullah, and he made all the misfits in, of that city into soldiers because David had that anointing. He could turn anybody into a soldier. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. So now you got your father, the top military man, in the nation. You think he's not going to teach his son military thought? Military combat thinking? Right. That text right there was a military strategy to keep yourself focused. Keep your eyes front. You know why? Behind you, you did. How do you know? Because you're living in the past. Ain't nothing living in the past no more. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. You're not looking from side to side. You know why? Because you're looking from side to side, you can't see what's in front of you. You can't be paying attention to what your neighbor's doing. You can't do it. You have got to stay focused up front. What lies in front of you is your future. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we pay attention to what our neighbor doing, and that's a whole other subject. <laughs> we pay attention to that. You can't go forward if you're stagnant. Mm -hmm. Right? Keep your eyes front. You'll always know where you're going. Yeah. Always know where you're going. Because God, God, give me direction. What if I said, open your eyes? That's it. Man. What if he said, open your eyes? Mm -hmm. That's deep. Keep your eyes front and keep them open. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So here's the last one. What was the first one again? Don't do what the wicked do. Second one? Third one. Look straight ahead. Good. So here's the fourth one. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Proverbs 4.27. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. So wait a minute. This is saying that if I follow evil, I get sidetracked. To be sidetracked means I was going in the right direction at one point. But then I start to veer off and take the scenic route. Come on. It sounds like that means don't get comfortable in your walk. That's what it sounds like to me. Someone's been like, I've been saved since I was four. 
been in church my whole life. I ain't never lived. Why do people think good living is bad living? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't lived. You know, I ain't did nothing. What a blessing and an honor to not have been experience the amount of trash that people have experienced. Right. Uh, you think all that's fun? Now talk about the tears because the devil always coming back. You, want, you know why I say that? Is he said, oh, you know, I want this, this, and this. He said, oh, okay, I'm going to give you the excitement of your life, but then he's going to come back for that payment. Uh-huh. And guess what? It's going to be weeping and gnashing the teeth. <laughs> come on, somebody. Don't you know there's excitement and glory? Yes. Yes. When you're truly, truly blessed by God, it's wonderful when you don't have some of the problems that some of these people be having. It's a wonderful thing not to be wretched. Let me help you. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> people be like, oh, this is so cute. No, it's, no, it's wretched. <laughs> Raggedy and ghetto. Tasteless with no class. And some people live in these crazy lives looking for something to try to fulfill a void that will never be filled that way. Mm-hmm. You live in God's way, and you don't have to experience some of the negativity that the world offers up to you every day of your life. That's a blessing. That is a blessing. Don't get sidetracked. Don't don't start off doing good and then start declining. What about getting sidetracked on your own stuff? Sometimes we don't like to pace ourselves, so we want to do everything now. That's not God's way. He has a season for everything. And just because God told you what you're going to be doing don't mean you got to do it today. He said, I'm telling you so you know what direction we're going in. It's like me. Let's say if I'm on the road, I might want to go through the directions first to see what, how many times, how many exits I might have to go in, how long it might take me to get to the end plan. Right? So I may want to know those things. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to do all those turns simultaneously. It means that I'm going to, after so many miles turn here, after so many miles turn here, make a loop, whatever, in its time. So when God gives you a word, don't mean that that word is going to manifest that very moment. Just means, hold on tight, it's coming, keep going down this street. Amen. He tells us a lot of things and foretelling so that we don't get sidetracked. But a lot of times we get so like, man, that turn ain't here yet. That turn ain't here yet. Yeah. And we pull over the side of the road, get out, go shopping. That turn ain't here yet. Well, forget it. I ain't going nowhere else. I'm going to do it right here. This, this, and that. He looking like, what's wrong with you? That's not what I have for you. I'm just telling you you on the right road, so stay where you are. I think God gets real irritated at us. I don't care what nobody say. I think he be sitting up here like, you never get my blood pressure up. <laughs> I died on the cross for you, that's all I can do. <laughs> I'm serious. I just be asking, like, Lord, thank you for staying patient with me. Yes. You know, thank you, God, because I know sometimes I might complain too much, or sometimes I'd be like, whatever, whatever, or sometimes I, I might think I'm God for a day and try to do way too much. And He's like, I really appreciate you trying to take a load off my back, but I got this. <laughs> that's me and God's joke. And he's like, You got my job too? <laughs> Like you do it so much better, God. Thank you. <laughs> so we have to stay focused. So what was the first one? Good. Second one. Guard your heart. Three. Four. Those are the keys to life. Yes. Amen. Real simple. You want what God has for you? Follow these. And keep Proverbs four. In your back pocket. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for caring about us having a balanced life. We thank you that you cared enough to share your wisdoms with your people so many years ago that it's still relevant today. Lord, truly, that these words of wisdom is wisdom that could go through the generations. We thank you that that your word is not outdated, but it's really relevant today. Thank you for decoding your word for us that we can be able to walk in the manifestation of your glory today. And Lord, we forever give you all the glory and praise. Lord, Holy Spirit, be with us and help us to live the lives that you have called us to live, that we finish the work that you have us to finish. Yes. And we ask these things in the name of Yehoshua, we pray. Amen. 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 Raise your hand if you just need prayer today. All right. The altar is open.
Here, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for celebrity status. <laughs> um, I like to just. My grandfather passed in St. Louis yesterday. So, yeah. Appreciate it. I, I had a feeling his spirit was ready. He was 90, 90 years old. So, yeah. And then, uh, God bless you. Just praying for direction uh, to be more sensitive to the spirit and for my family overall and the body of Christ also. those that loved him. Yes, Lord. Lord, we declare that they will celebrate his life the way you have them to. And help them to carry on in the days ahead. And the other prayers that the man of God has brought to you, oh God, we ask that you hear his prayer and manifest it as, as you see fit. In the name of Yahushua, we pray. In the name of Yahushua. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. you are changing the people that are in her life that mean her no good. Lord, we declare that you will replace her with strong intercessors and people who truly, truly love her, that don't want her, that she doesn't feel like she's missed a thing. Lord, we ask you right now that you will bridle her tongue and, and that you will quench that angry fire that's in her, Lord. That truly she will feel your every yielding love, oh God, that she will feel overwhelmed by it. Um, your protection, that she'll feel the level of peace and uh, peace that surpasses all her understanding, Lord. We thank you for your precious peace over her life and the calmness that she'll feel in the days to come. And we believe you to do so. And we cover it now in the Holy Ghost fire with the blood of Jesus, we pray in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
I made her come up. Okay. You say? She's in confirmation classes right now. So that should be it. You say? You believe in Christ? I just, I just want to learn prayer, communion, because that's all about the body time and stuff like that. Okay. Think more about that. Amen. Dad just wants you to be protected. And I bless you. Okay, this is your hand. She was cool with that. <laughs> so I got over her knee. <laughs> Lord, we declare right now that you bless the young woman of God. That, Lord, that you keep her covered and keep her mind safe and stayed upon you, Lord. And as she goes through her confirmation classes, that, Lord, that she have a continuously understanding of what you've caused her to do. She'll have the courage of you to continue to enrich her relationship with you and grow her relationship with her father, Lord, that they will be strong and tight as the years go. I went for all on you because he told me to be. There's nothing to be worried about. How many days? Cool. It'll be going by so fast. And then you will be celebrating a wonderful anniversary the first of the year. You will. Okay.
She would not hear from wounded ears anymore. And that she would not look at life from wounded eyes. That she would hear truth and see truth in Christ. And that she will receive what she is for her. So we thank you that she be That she will be strong. Mama, Periscope, what is her prayer request? I'm waiting for her to type it. Amen. Can you ask her what's your prayer? Hmm? Ask her what's your prayer. What is your prayer request? Type your prayer request and we will pray for you. She's still doing that? Do you need prayer? Okay. You do? Come on. And wait for that prayer request. Okay. So Kelly wants prayer that she will, it was faith. increase her faith in God. Lord, we declare right now in the name of Yehoshua that you will touch Kelly right now through Periscope. Yes, Lord. And we believe right now in the name of Jesus as we pray for Kelly, Lord, that you will keep her strong and steadfast on the road that you have called her to be on. That she will walk down this road with no fear. 
that you would increase her faith right now in the name of Yehoshua. And we declare it in the name of Yehoshua, Holy Ghost, fire, and the blood of Jesus, that this is so. And that every avenue where fear has rested, that she will have the strength to evict fear right now in the name of Yehoshua, that she is free right now, that she will close the morning gates where fear has entered into her life. And Lord, we, we ask right now that you would just swap the fear for courage, that you would just swap the fear for grace and love that will cover a multitude. And we declare it and we decree it in the name of Yehoshua, we pray. Amen. And I speak prophetically for my mom, uh, Dorothy Wade. I declare in the name of Jesus for healing all through your body, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. We declare that the Holy Spirit will sweep your body in the name of Yehoshua. We declare that pain will flee. We declare that every gate that has been opened that has caused pain to Nessa, I declare in the name of Jesus by faith that it has, that it has been evicted. In the name of Yehoshua, we declare right now, oh God, that as we lift up holy hands, that we have received with the very thing that we have asked for. We declare even now, while you are nestling in your bed, we declare right now that you start feeling strength pour into your body like never before. That you will begin to feel better, that you will begin to move better, that you will begin to, to know that you are better. And we believe that so each and every day. Lord, we declare that you will touch daddy right now. And we speak to pain and tell it to go. And we speak that you'll put his healing power all over his body in the areas that he needs it, oh God. And we believe right now that there will be a healing anointing sweeping through that house like never before. We declare right now that each day goes on, your strength increases even the more. Your joy increases even the more. Everything that needs to increase even the more, Lord. And we declare and decree it, Lord, that he will make your way easy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to pray a covering prayer. Oh, everybody who got prayed for, including myself, Lord, that you will pray healing anointing over myself and over my husband, oh God. Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus that every prayer request that's come here has been answered. Even uh, prayers that are in the heart that have not been spoken out openly. Lord, we declare that you will hear the vocal prayers and the silent prayers. And Lord, we declare Holy Ghost fire and the blood of Jesus that in this spirit, in this anointing, that every prayer that has been prayed, oh God, that not one will hit the ground, Lord, that every last one will reach heaven and everything will come to pass just as we said in a speedily time. A quickening time. In the name of Yahushua, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have communion. Praise the Lord. On the same night he was betrayed, <coughs> he took the bread. And after he had broken it, he said, this is my body <coughs> that's been broken for you on Catholic's cross. Take me. Likewise, that he took the cup and after he had given thanks, he said, this is the blood. That's been shared for you for the remission of your sins. Take and drink ye all of it. And do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. Amen. I have a song ringing in my head. I don't know all the verses, but we're just going to go with it. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. We're going to get ready for our food. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. I'm so glad 
Jesus set me free, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free, save my soul, I'm so glad. Jesus save my soul, I'm so glad. Jesus save my soul, I'm so glad. Jesus save my soul. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus saved my soul, made me whole. I'm so glad. Jesus made me whole. I'm so glad. Jesus made me whole. I'm so glad. Jesus made me whole. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus made me whole. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Can we clap a little bit? Amen. Amen. For those of you who have been praying for my voice, keep on praying. It's almost there. Amen. 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 It's almost there. I thank God for it. I thank God for your blessings and things of that nature. And for things to come. Begin to keep preparing for our annual fast. That's in January. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's for the month of January, and uh, Terry will be doing the, uh, you will be walking us through that for second service, and I guess the following week, Sheree, you'll walk it through 11 a.m., mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get ready for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we give this tithes and offering to you, Lord God. Increase, multiply a hundredfold for your kingdom and for your people. This is all for your glory. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. 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 All hearts and minds clear? Amen. We want to thank God for Dominique who is starting her ministry journey. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. She did a fantastic amen. job today ministering. We look forward to her as she gets continues on. Amen. Dana's next. Amen. 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 I will be waiting on Dana, amen. So keep praying for Dana's health. Yes. Uh, because the enemy don't want to see her preaching. But guess what? We punched the so we punched the devil in his ass. We're gonna get uh Benny Hinn on it. I I I I'll put you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Benny Hinn, we go we go we gonna be Benny Hinn on that on that demon and we'll punch you in the face. Because the woman of God got a word. From the Lord. Yes, Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. God bless y'all today. Continue to tell people about prophetic fire. And is there any other things, announcements? Toy drive this next week is the last week to turn in money and collections and everything. Because we're going to, on December 18th, we're going to drop everything off at Turning Point. It's going to be a busy day. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Starting next year, ministry is going to be going at uh, Periscope, via Periscope. Be a bear school. Good morning prayers. Really? Amen. <laughs> For real? Amen. Where at? Uh, we'll be doing it online still. We like do, through Periscope. We'll be doing our, our morning prayers. Is it gonna be on the phone though? Yeah. So y'all be on the phone doing Periscope? Yeah. Was it like? Well, wait a minute. Help me work this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be you. Mm-hmm. And then you gonna be on the speakerphone. Y'all yeah. still working the details. Yeah, right? we're working on it, but we talked about it, but yeah. So you can basically gonna have your periscope popping, basically. Ministry, yeah. Ministry's gonna have its own periscope. Yeah. <laughs> All right now. So y'all let's be praying for ministry. I wonder what the church is gonna talk about when everybody married. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, we are dismissed. <laughs>